Good afternoon, everyone, and happy Earth Day. Uh, welcome to our second hangout of the day with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. Uh, my name is Joe Grabowski, and for those who don't know, we're all about bringing science, adventure, and conservation to classrooms uh, throughout North America and hopefully beyond as well. Um, thrilled to welcome our uh, guest today, uh, Jose Ortega. He's joining us from California, I believe. He's a National Geographic Emerging Explorer. Um, and when he's not in school, he's doing field work in Nicaragua, protecting endangered sea turtle species. So for those who don't know, sea turtles are in big trouble. Um, seven species, um, and they're all endangered to some degree. So they've been on Earth for over 100 million years and survived a lot of different things. But unfortunately, us as human beings um, seem to be a big enough force that we're putting them in quite a bit of jeopardy. So um, Nicaragua is home to... Uh, five of the world's seven turtle species, and Jose will be heading back there uh, in June to continue his research. So, Jose, absolutely thrilled to have you joining us on Earth Day today to share your research, some of your stories, and, of course, questions with all the students we have joining. Well, thank you very much for having me, having me, and, and especially to all, all the students in all the classrooms, and happy Earth Day. And, uh, well, I'm really glad to be able to to share my, my humble experience with these wonderful creatures, uh, sea turtles, and hopefully I will be able to, to, to provide a little bit of, of better understanding about this. Uh, shall I start? Shall I go Absolutely. ahead? Yeah, for okay. sure. Okay, so let me start with uh, the presentation. So I should um, share my screen. Yeah, and then pick the very first one, the share your whole screen. Uh, I see I'm sharing already my whole screen. And uh, so now let's try to... Yeah, here we go. Looks good. So, hello, everybody. Well, I, I'm, I'm really, really, really happy to... to to have this opportunity that Joe is, is giving me and to, to reach through technology uh, different class, classrooms along North America. Uh, as, as we were speaking today, uh, today's Earth Day, and, and in such a way, it, when you see this picture taken by NASA, it is amazing how this big, big, big home uh, that we all share uh, in, in the world, uh, in the world um, seems seems so, so tiny and and so fragile, uh, looking from the from the space. And um, maybe maybe that that is true. But what I wanted to share is basically that I have been working here in this area. This is uh, Nicaragua, my home country. Um, but now I am. I am here uh, doing some some study. I went back to 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 the university to the Stanford University, where I'm doing my PhD studies and also working about like uh, trying to understand sea turtles and, and and how can we help to save them. Uh, but the interesting thing is, even though it seems like we are really far, you can see that all we are connected through the big, big, big mass of water that is like both the Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean. And well, I have done, I have worked on sea turtle conservation for almost 15 years already. And I have the humble honor of, 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 of being prized by National Geographic as an emerging explorer, as, as Joe said. And what I wanted to share that I, I was really happy and really excited by being able to meet all these amazing people doing wonderful job. And they did this, this, this cartoon uh, and I, I was really happy. I guess you can figure out which, who in that cartoon uh, is me. Um, obviously, this is the guy, the crazy guy with the turtles. But then I went with a cartoon to my, my younger daughter, uh, Lara, and I, I, I was really proud and almost bragging to her. Hey, look, I have a cartoon. Can you identify wh where am I in the cartoon? And she didn't hesitate when she pointed and, and found myself. She said, that is you, daddy. That is you. So I've, I've been crazy about turtles, uh, and I have worked with them in the water, and, and also like have a lot of friends that, that really 
that really enjoy and care about turtles. This is our species, and I think everybody uh, must like have somebody that we especially like about this planet that really, really, really care about it and try to make a difference. Uh, so Joe already was was uh, telling, telling a little bit about how many species of turtles are there. Uh, there are seven species of sea turtles in, in, the, in the world. And in Nicaragua, we have five species. Um, what I would like to do now is to share with you a little bit of two special species uh, that I have been working with. Um, and, and from there, try to share a little bit of what are the challenges we have to, to save those creatures. So here are the species. We have, you know, all, almost all of them have a, a share a similar morphology, you know? It's, turtles have carapaces. They have uh, amazing adaptations that allow them to, to live in the ocean. Although originally they come from, from ancestors that, that, that were developed in land environment, they, they readapted to live in the ocean, no? and so you, they have these flippers that allow them to, 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 to swim really fast. They can hold the breath under the water for hours if they want, but they still need to come out to the surface to, to breathe, and they, need, they still need to come onto the land, especially to the nesting, nesting area, to lay the eggs and to continue their reproductive cycle. So in that sense, this is, this is a wonderful thing about turtles. It's like they are connecting the oceans with the lands. And the other interesting thing is that they are coming back to the same nesting beach each, each year. So this is one of the species that is, in some ways, a, a, is, is an extreme turtle compared with, with the rest. And, and it's because it's one of the smaller sea turtles that, that are in the world, if the carapace meter like a little bit more than half a meter. So if we are accustomed to land turtles, that is still a big turtle for many of us. Uh, but the interesting thing about this turtle is that they, they behave, uh, they have this reproductive behavior that is called an arribada. An arribada is this uh, amazing phenomena that occurs in like eight or ten places around the world. Um, two of those places are in Nicaragua. Um, basically, it consists that in certain times of the year, thousands of turtles get together and they 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 agree to nest at the same time. Um, and in doing so, uh, the idea is that that they overwhelm all the animals that that used to eat the turtles, the eggs, and they can uh, reach a larger success in, 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 in the reproduction. So the, the nesting of the turtles star when, when, when a turtle comes into the nest, they, they, in, the, in, the ne in, the, in the beach, they are not so agile, agile as they are in the ocean, so it's a hard work for them. And it could take them more, more or less two hours, one or two hours to, to complete all the job. Um, and some of the questions that some children ask me, okay, and, and, and how are the turtle eggs? And, and, and how many eggs does, uh, do turtles lay? And so and, and turtle, you have to imagine like turtle eggs like ping pong balls. They are perfectly spherical. They are like more or less the size of a ping pong ball, but in contrast or in difference to chicken eggs, uh, the, the shell is not hard, it's soft, it's leathery, it's flexible, and, and that provides more resistance to the eggs uh, for, for mechanical uh, shocks. Uh, another interesting thing about turtles uh, uh, is that when when the female lay the eggs, um, the the nest will 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 stay in the in the will stay in the in the sun for 45 or 50 50 days until the the hatchlings emerge. And do you know what is really interesting about the the turtles, the the hatchling of the turtles, is that 
we can predict if a turtle is going to be a, a turtle male or a turtle female, female depending of the temperature that the nest is being incubated. So it turns out that the, if the net is uh, the temperature with the nest, the nest is incubated is below 20, 20, 29 Celsius degrees. So most part of the little turtles are going to be male turtles. But if the temperature is higher, um, so most part of the of the little turtles are going to be female turtles. Uh, so that that happens with many reptiles, and it means that that the sex of the of the of the hatchlings are going to be uh, completely dependent of the temperature of the environment. And um, what is amazing about this is like because turtles are, are, are laying the eggs in different seasons, are the nests are some nests are 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 in the shade, and other nests are are laid in in in, in the sun. So we have a, a good mix of females and males. And this is good because so uh, there will be enough females and enough males for they to mate and continue the life cycles of the turtles. But here it comes one of the problems that I wanted to share with you. And probably you are familiar or you have here about like the issue of climate change. Uh, what is happening in many, in many nesting areas now <clears throat> is that because the temperatures are, are, are rising too much and are being high and being too high, so we are starting to observe that more more females are are being produced than males, and that that can, that seems pretty 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 good in terms of girls' power, but but at the end, as I was saying, we need a good proportion between females and males, and so you have you probably have already heard about many of the problems that climate change is causing in the nature in in our environment in the ocean, and this is another one. It's basically if temperatures continue raising, we are going to face a situation and we are going to have just a total female population. And that obviously uh, is going to, to affect the capacity of turtles to reproduce and continue the life cycle. So this is one thing to think, this is one of the issues to think about when we are having our conversation is how can we help to uh, help the turtles avoiding climate change or avoiding the increase of of the temper the temperature in in our in our planet. The other species I I, I, I wanted to, to share with you today is the leatherbacks. And the leatherbacks is well is the, the species I started working with and it's an amazing and huge reptile. It can uh, it can weigh almost like two thousand pounds. It, it can be as large as two and a half meters. It's a uh, it um, it and and even though it's so big and big animal, it fits almost exclusively in jellyfish. Um, I I know you are smart, and many of you know what is jellyfish, but I would like to explain that jellyfish is is one uh, is an animal that is in in the ocean that 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 is mostly mostly. Uh, their body is mostly composed by water, and it's incredible how a, such a big animal like leatherback can get the nutrients and can can get enough food just feeding on 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 on, on this jellyfish. And that means that 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 uh, leatherbacks uh, need to eat lot a lot a lot of 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 jellyfish. This is a male leatherback that got entangled in a in a in a nesting, uh, in, a, in, a, in a fishing net, and some friends working in the Caribbean of Nicaragua were able to disentangle and save this male. But look how big are these turtles. And these are the hatchlings. No? And it's amazing how, how, how a so tiny hatching can grow to such big, big dimension. And talking about jellyfish, I wanted to share with you this video I completely found on YouTube, so I'm not 
claiming any credit about this. I hope there is no issues with copyright, Joe. Uh, but I, I found it pretty amazing. In oh god, I had it by okay problem. Wrong video. Sorry. I will try to share it later while we are having our conversation. But uh, there is a, an amazing video of 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 um, of leatherback feeding on jellyfish. So we need they they need to to eat a lot lot of jellyfish. And the issue with jellyfish is that uh, they play a, a role in the ecosystem, and they are also important jellyfish. But they are important in a good balance. So the problem with jellyfish is even though they they seem like uh, uh, very very like unharmed or dangerous creature, they are voracious predators. They eat lot 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 of of baby baby larvae from fish, from lobsters and other animals that human human are using in the ocean. And so what it can happen is that if we don't have sea turtles eating those jellyfish, so there will be an imbalance and that finally will affect uh, the equilibrium of the ocean and there will be not enough fish or enough lobster to support all the fishing communities that are using those resources. And this kind of thing can happen. There's a lot of jellyfish in the ocean. The other problem associated with the jellyfish is like Unfortunately, uh, they are quite. They look quite like plastic bags, and when we threw the plastic in the ocean, uh, some turtles can can miss uh, the, the can eat the, the plastic bags, thinking that these are jellyfish, and obviously it creates a big problem because we don't want turtles eating plastic. This can affect their health and ultimately can kill. Uh, many turtles. So uh, you probably have learned a lot about how plastic pollution is affecting our environment, and this is one another example of how uh, plastic, how bad can be plastic for for the ocean. One problem that is not happening too much in North America, but it's a big big problem for us, is the poaching of turtles. Uh, in Nicaragua, we have coastal communities that traditionally have been eating the, the eggs, the turtle of the eggs, or have been eating uh, turtle meat in order to, to, to get food or to get an income selling those products to other people that want to buy them. The problem is that uh, we, have, we have extracted so much turtles and so much eggs that now all these animals are disappearing. And so we cannot keep doing that. And so we need to work to try to, to change that. But at the same time, we need to get the people that have been using those turtles an opportunity so that they can, they can keep having a job or some source of income and they can continue their livelihoods. And the problem with turtle eggs is, is really large, as I was explaining. We have people, local communities, sometimes children like you, that are working in the night in the nesting beaches, searching for the turtles, collecting the turtle eggs, and then selling to other people that bring into the cities, and and people that 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 is willing to pay for the turtle eggs to eat them. And sometimes the problem and the lack of awareness of education is so big in our countries. That, that even people that has had the opportunity to access to education or even are taking position with power are also doing uh, eating the turtle eggs even though it's illegal. And I always share this photo because this is a very emblematic of how big is our problem because these, these gentlemen are, are, were congressmen in Nicaragua and they were eating turtle eggs when eating turtle eggs were, was illegal. So let me see if this video works. <laughs> uh, uh, and this is a small video that it was produced by the organization I was working with and that tried to depict a little bit of how we approach this problem. Uh, 
technology. Okay, I. If you pardon me, I'm just going to. Jose, if you have your headphones plugged in, you just need to unplug them so we can hear. Oh, sorry. Decided to uh, start uh, the sea conservation in the Pacific. My name is Jose Urteaga. I'm a marine biologist. I work with Fauna and Flora International. I started working with SFI 10 years ago when this organization decided to start the sea turtle conservation in the Pacific coast of Nicaragua. Nicaragua is an important place for sea turtle conservation because we have important nesting beaches for one of the most critical endangered populations of sea turtles, ladderbacks and hawksbill. One of the major problems we have in these nesting beaches is the poaching of the eggs. People in the coastal community is poor and they see on, on sea turtle eggs like an opportunity to have an extra source of income. In many nesting beaches in Nicaragua and the Pacific Coast, almost 100% of all the sea turtle eggs has been extracted for decades. One of the main approaches of our program is improving livelihoods, including transforming poachers into rangers that protect the nesting area de muy pequeño, este, mamá, papá, extraían huevos, entonces igual nosotros se extraían para luego venderlo al mercado y comprar alimentos. Ahora trabajando con FFI eh, he aprendido mucho sobre las tortugas. Antes me comía el huevo y no veía un tortuguillo dentro. Ahora puedo ver cuando, si me voy a comer un huevo, Puedo ver un tortuguillo que puede sobrevivir. When you first come to a nesting beach that hasn't been protected before, you will find people that has been poaching for generations, and you have to offer alternative to them. The incentive program works in this way. Each poacher, instead of selling the eggs to the black market, help to the community patrolling team, pointing and telling where is the nesting female. We go there and we can relocate the nest into the hatchery. The poacher will receive an economical incentive, but he will also receive a proportional income for each hatchling that is produced. During the last 10 years, we have helped to release millions of hatchlings on sea turtles and to protect thousands and thousands of nesting females. But now the next challenge is to continue supporting this work. We need to continue the effort to consolidate what we have achieved and make it sustainable. Okay, um, so finally, uh, as I was um, explaining before, is returning to the issue of the Earth Day. It's like thinking about that wonderful, that wonderful ocean and the different places where different people can live. And, and I, I encourage you all to, to, to think about, I know you are learning to think about that. And, and also I'm sure that you are also starting to learn a lot about this planet and I encourage you to continue that. Talking about the ocean, uh, just I wanted to share with you this map. This is one of the wonderful things about turtles is that they do large and huge migrations. So here you can see like each of these lines, each of these lines is the track of the migration of a single turtle. And you can see how far they can move, what they can reach. These turtles were tagged in Costa Rica and Panama, for example, and they moved to the Gulf of Mexico, they moved to the, to the, to the east coast of the United States. 
And then here, for example, you have turtles uh, tagged in South America and Guyana that did a large migration for, for all the Atlantic, even near to the coast of, 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 of England and Europe. And here you have turtles like doing like the same migration, but then from South America to Africa. And if you see this map for all the species of sea turtles and all the regions of the world, you will see like how turtles are connecting us. And, and this is an, one of the amazing things about turtles. And, and that's one of the things that I love about turtles. This picture I, it was taken like almost already like eight years ago. My daughter was, was, was younger, was two years. And we were, we, we were working in a nesting beach where we were receiving like maybe 10 of 12 leatherback nests per season. When 20 years before, there were like thousands of these same turtles coming to the beach. And I was, I was feeling really, 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 really concerned because I, I had these sad feelings that maybe we were loose. We, we, are, we were going to lose them. And I wanted to, to share this turtle with my daughter. So I, I, I wanted for he to see the turtle. And and sorry for that technical issues. So um, so and and I so I walk her for like two 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 miles in the nesting beach in the darkness. And obviously, maybe at the beginning, it was not the most thrilling adventure for her. She was a little bit scared when she saw like the big animal and the big creature. But but finally, uh, finally, uh, she also was able to see the hatchlings, and it, and 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 she was really really happy of having that experience. And and this is another wonderful thing I, I like about turtles that that everybody gets really excited about them, and so they while they are moving across all the globe and basically almost anybody in the planet has opportunity to, to, to have a turtle, to, to say that in the place are turtles, we have the, this opportunity to connect with each other. And it's happened with you, with the children, but it's happening also with the big people. No? It's like turtles like are, are making all the big people, the older people, like going back. Hey Jose, can you, can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, so can you think, see me? No, you you closed the hangout. Did you minimize the hangout? Oh gosh. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's technology. It's new. Oh, when that happen? Ah, there you go. And then hit the share screen button again, and you'll be back. There you are. But when that is stopped? Oh, just now. Just now. Oh, okay, so. I, I, I was able to to finish the presentation. Oh yeah, we saw we saw the pictures, the videos. Yeah, great, great. So sorry for that, kids. I'm sorry. I'm learning to manage that. This. It's no big deal. We're we're up to the part now, um, where we no, can now. If my daughter will see me, then she will say like, "Oh, dad, you are terrible." Dads and technology. <laughs> yeah. All right. No, it it was it was perfect, Jose, until the very end. You just minimize the window. You just reopen it. No big deal. So okay. I'm, I'm going to well, introduce the classes, Jose, so you know who's joining us. Okay. So shall I, I? I'm still sharing my screen or not? No, you're back. We can see just okay. you now. Perfect. Yeah. So Jose, we've got a great group of classrooms. We've got Mrs. Uh, Carnovo's second grade class from St. Joseph School in Long Island, New York. We've got Mrs. Dwarf's grade eights from Taylorville, Illinois. 
We've got the Algonquian first graders uh, from Ashburn, Virginia. Mrs. Dillon's grade seven eights are joining us from Farmington in Missouri. Uh, Mr. Wright's grade eights are joining us from Sarnia in Ontario, so from Canada, not too far from me, about two, two and a half hours. And then uh, we had, lastly, we have a fifth grade class joining us from Raleigh, uh, North Carolina, Mrs. Uh, Byers class. So let's uh, fire up the microphones and let's get some questions going. So we'll start with our group in Virginia, our grade ones. Your microphone's on. Do you have a question? Say hi and what, tell them what your name is. Hi. I, wait, what? Just tell me your name. I'm Leo. Um, what, how much do leatherback turtles weigh? Okay, that's an amazing question. And, and you know, it's really hard for people to, to to go into the beach and, and, and wait always sort of. But there have been people that have figured out how to do it. And um, and it's all, the biggest leatherback turtle can weigh almost 2,000 pounds. So it, there are huge, huge, huge. Um, and to give you an idea of how big is that weight, I think it can be like maybe 20 of you together. That is a big turtle. That is a big turtle. Yeah. All right. Grade ones. Do you have another question for Jose? Lots of hands. Hi, I'm Oliver. How big is a leatherback sea turtle? We just answered that one. Can you? No, big. Well, how big? <laughs> well, I can answer that. It, it can be like two and a half meters. That is more or less um, seven, like like eight feet, eight feet long. Thank you. Okay, and let's snake one more you. from the grade ones. Uh, Nolan. Nolan, you go Come on up. Hi my, hi, my name is Nolan, and why do if it's, the nest is near hot places, why is there more gir girls, and if it's kind of cool, why is there boy turtles? Well, that 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 is a is a great question. I I see like that that happens in bi in biology. There are different ways in which the sex of animals is, is determined. In, in many animals, it comes from genetic, genetic reasons, like it, that it's happened in, in most of the mammals. But in the ca case of reptiles, it seems like the strategies of reptiles have, have, have evolved in the way that it depends on the environment. And why that strategy has evolved, I, I, I'm not pretty sure, but, but, but but it's well known that the yeah, AI is, is, is determined by the environment. And so that in this moment, that is a big issue when, when the climate is changed so fastly because that maybe the, the turtles will not have enough capacity to adapt at the rhythm of what the climate is changing. Okay, great questions from the grade ones. Yeah. Uh, let's jump to our classroom in Long Island, New York. Your microphone's on. Hi. Okay. Which, which, um, my name is Taryn, and which countries does sea turtles live near? Sorry, can can you can you your the question was what countries do sea turtles live near? What sorry sorry. Uh, Jose, the question was, what question or what country do sea turtles live near? What countries? Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry for that. Um, it's like a you are you are articulating perfectly. My English is terrible. Uh, um, it, uh, there are more or less the, turtles are are coming to to many many countries almost in 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 both. La, uh, Tropical, subtropical areas, and sometimes in nesting beaches, and sometimes in 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 <clears throat> in, in just in the water. 
Uh, more than 50, 50 countries have, uh, in the world have nesting beaches. Uh, in the U.S., uh, you can find um, nesting areas mainly in, in, in the area of the on, on the on the East Coast, in Florida, in the Gulf of Mexico, but also in the Carolinas. But in, in Canada, in Canada, in the water, you can find leatherback turtles. So the, 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 the turtles are, are spreading for many, 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 many countries. All right, let's grab another question from Long Island. What is the rarest sea turtle? I don't know if you can what? hear it. What's what? the rarest sea turtle is? Sorry again, what is the rarest sea turtle? No, that's the question? Yep, the rarest sea turtle. Yeah, yeah. So that that is a good question, and I, and I see like it depends of what what are you looking at the turtles because there are many things that are like amazing and rare about the turtles. For example, what I was explaining about like the leatherback, like feeding just jellyfish. From the anatom anatomic perspective, the morphology of the body and 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 the biology of the turtle, I would say like. The leatherback is the one that is more different for the rest of the turtles because while all the, the turtles have like a hard carapace, the leatherback has a soft carapace and, and, and have a lot of different behaviors that, that the rest of the turtles do not have. So I would say that the readers is the leatherback. Okay, let's jump to our class in Missouri. That kind of turtle shell group. Like, feels like leather. It's not hard like a turtle. That we would have. Oh, is it our turn? Okay. Your turn. Oh, sorry, we were we were re, we were learning. Uh, Nathan has a question for you. Okay, Nathan, come stand up right here. Hi, Nathan. Hey. No, turn. Look at the camera. There you go. Okay, now. What is your favorite turtle? Again? Again? What is your favorite turtle? Otter. What is your favorite turtle? My favorite turtle. Okay. Um. <laughs> that is a tough question. I, I have a special attachment with the leatherbacks because I, I it's, it's the first species I started working with, but I also love a lot the hawksbills because they are like more gray seal and, and, and they have a beautiful carapace and I kind of also are amused with the fact that 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 um, hawksbill turtle feed on 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 sponges. And when you realize what sponges are made of, you see these turtles are crazy because the sponges have an exoskeleton that resembles almost like glass. So it's like they are eating glass. And that, that is crazy about the Hawksville turtle that I, I really like that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and do you have one more question? Anybody else have a question for him? No. no. Uh, what kind of turtles do you like? Well, that's what he, oh, that's what he just answered that's what he just question. Said. He likes the leatherback turtle. And uh, what was the name of the second kind of turtle that you liked? Hawksbill. Please come to the main office. The Hawksbill sea turtle. I've been able to dive with them in Cozumel with the Hawksbill sea turtle, so it's pretty cool. Anybody else have a question? I like the big turtle. I like the big one. The leatherback. They, they are amazing. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. I'm with you there, Jose. I would love to see a leatherback sea turtle. That would be, for me, I, I've been able to dive with a few species, but that would be pretty, pretty special to do that. Um, Illinois, our grade eights, do you guys have a couple questions for Jose? Okay, maybe they can't hear us. Taylorville, Illinois, can you guys hear us? We just can't hear your, we can't hear you today. Maybe um, if you want to type the question to the chat sidebar, you could do it that way. Um, it's the little blue icon in the top of the screen. For whatever reason, it doesn't seem like your microphone's working today. 
But while you do that, I'm going to jump over to Mr. Wright's class and let them ask a couple questions. All right. Go ahead, Jackson. Shh, girls and guys, let's um, My name's Jackson. Um, how, how, fast do, how fast can uh, baby sea turtles crawl across the beach? Oh, that, that, that is a, a very curious <laughs> question. I, 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 I'm not aware of somebody like, well, maybe there has been people measuring the speed of, of, of the hatchlings. Ah, oh, I, I, I just have a sense that they, they can, they can crawl like as fast, like a maybe like, like they can do, they can do a meter, or let's say they can do a feet in maybe five seconds. Uh, but they, it, it demands a big effort for them to reach from the le the, the the nest to the to the ocean, and in that stage. Of the race into the ocean, they are pretty vulnerable to 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 a lot of predators. So we see like crabs and seagulls and other animals that predate and take advantage of this this stage to feed on the hatchlings. Yeah. All right, and one more from Mr. Wright's group. One more from Mr. Wright's group. What happened to the leatherbacks that? We're on that nesting beach. So you're asking if they go to the wrong nesting beach? Do you remember back when we had the meeting? Are you asking if they if they go to the wrong nesting beach? I uh, know we have asked what used to happen. To, there's, there's only eight that go there now. What happened to all the other leatherbacks? Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, sorry. Uh, um, yeah, it's not, as I was explaining, the problem this is in Paragua. We have been like um, we have been eating the, the eggs for so long that for a long period of time there has not been. Uh, new turtles coming into the ocean, and so uh, when the when the old turtles start to stop coming into the into the nesting beach, so the numbers start to drop. But in addition, we have been like uh, putting plastic into the ocean, and, and we guess that we have some estimated that that has been killing some turtles, and then also th there has been some problems with fishers that do not want to fish the turtles, but because the kind of fishing gears they are using in the ocean, um, um, they, they are killing turtles too. And so the combination of all those factors has basically caused like the, the leatherbacks to, the, the leatherback population to, to drop. All right, and let's jump to our final class in North Carolina, you'll just have to turn the microphone on for me because it is too low for me to reach on the screen. Oh, okay, can you hear us? Yeah, we got you. Okay, so Yvonne, go ahead. My name is Yvonne, and um, what is the oldest sea turtle? That is a, it's a great question. Uh, um, I, the problem with sea turtles is that we have not been able to, to tag or to measure or to follow the same turtle individual for a long time as we have been able to do with land turtles. Uh, so you know that, that land turtles, like the Galapagos one, can live longer than 100 years, uh, much more longer. Some of them is almost 150 years. And, and, and we have a guess that that sea turtles can live, um, can, can be long-lived, they can live like 60, 80, 80 years, but we don't have a good guess, estimate of how, 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 how older is the oldest of the turtles, of the sea turtles. Thank you. Okay, Alexis. My name is Alexis. What inspired you to work 
can help save the sea turtles? That's a great question. And I, I seen all started uh, with my mom uh, that she used to take me when you were I was your age or, or younger to the ocean. And I had the opportunity to, to see a lot of, of animals and, and creatures there. And I basically got fascinated with these animals. And I, I knew that when when I grew up I wanted to do something related to the ocean. And then as as I was saying before, as like I, I when I realized that that these these turtles were in danger, I get really sad, and I decided I wanted to work to protect them. So I think like this is one of the messages I, I would like to convey. It's like all of us uh, kind of develop a, some sort of attachment or 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 bounding with some part of the nature. It doesn't matter if it's a turtle, if it's an animal, if it's a, if it's a tree or a plant. Uh, the important thing is that we 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 really we really be able to care about that and don't forget about that bonding we have with this part of the planet. Thank you so much. We Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you. All right, and Jose, I love that answer. Parents inspiring students to um, to learn about the world around them and to take care of it, and that's what I try to do as a teacher. And I'm sure every one of those teachers. Uh, we connect with today they do as well so um, thank you so much Jose but the classroom whose microphone wasn't working in Illinois I did get one a couple questions come through and here's one that hasn't been asked yet um, so we know that sea turtles you talked about leatherbacks eating um, jellyfish and hawksbills eating sponges what else do sea turtles eat? Oh that's that's a good question so um, Obviously, we have like the more regular, uh, like Ollie Ridley's used to eat crabs or shrimps, lobster. That is more common food for us. Then we have the green turtles that are like sea cows in some sense. Like they 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 eat, they feed on on seagrass, and that is another important role that 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 uh, green turtle the, the uh, green turtle play in the ecosystem because they are kind of the gardeners. Of the seagrasses bench, and seagrasses benches uh, uh, beds are a very important fishing areas for. Uh, so yeah, they, they they can be also opportunistic, and and they, you know, the ocean is a big 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 place, and some animals, as soon as they found any kind of food that is available, they would try to take advantage of it. But mostly, I would say like, hawksbill are linked to sponges, leatherbacks to jellyfish. Green turtles to to seagrass, um, loggerhead turtles uh, used to eat more like big shellfish, and 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 only Ridley turtles used to eat like um, like small fish or crabs, and other kind of those creatures. Yeah. Okay, and Jose, we'll end off with one last question. This is a, a neat one that just came in uh, through the chat from the class in North Carolina. So they're wondering. How many hatchlings make it to the ocean, and or so kind of what percentage make it to the ocean, and what percentage make it to be an adult after that? And that's a good question, and and there is a lot. Unfortunately, there is a lot of uncertainty in that in the answer to that question. But the guess estimated that that is about one in one hundred or one in a in a thousand. Uh, so it's a it's a really 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 tough life for uh, for young turtles because there are a lot of oh, they have a lot of predators they have a lot of they, as I was explaining the beach there are animals that want to eat them uh, then in the ocean it's the same you have big fish sharks uh, it's and, and other animals that 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 are eating them and so if you add to all that like natural pressure you add you add the, the human pressure. You have like not just the animals in the beach, but also the people trying to eat them. So that is what makes things really harder for turtles. All right. Well, great presentation. Great questions from our classrooms across North America. Jose, thank you so much for spending some of your Earth Day with us today. No, it was a really, really special honor for me and really, really, really appreciate uh, the opportunity of sharing with all these wonderful uh, children, um, to the teachers, and, and obviously to Gijo for 
doing this amazing work and 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 giving me the opportunity to connect and that and I can say that this has been by far one of my best air days ever yeah all right well thank you so much what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn the microphones on and give the classrooms a chance to say goodbye and thank you so it's gonna get loud Jose I hope you're ready Yay! here we go <laughs> Everybody, thank you so much for joining me. We're signing off for today. Thank you so much. Everybody, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the rest of your Earth Day. Thank you, Jose, for taking us a little bit into your world. Thank you, Bye.